Mill dots or mill radians? This week on Mail Call Mondays. I'm John McQuay with 8541 Tactical, and this is Mail Call Mondays, the show that answers your questions about precision rifles, optics, and equipment. Welcome to another Mail Call Mondays, and this Monday I want to welcome Modular Driven Technologies as our sponsor for Mail Call Mondays. MDT produces high-quality chassis systems for a wide variety of precision rifles. If you've got a rifle and you need a chassis system for it, check out Modular Driven Technologies. We'll leave the link down in the description below. Now let's get on with our question for the week, and our question comes from Dusty. And Dusty asks, hello, I love the show. Would you be interested in covering the difference between Army Mills and USMC Mills? The information I've found online seems to be in reference to the differences between their mill dot reticles. Army uses 6,400 mils in a circle. USMC uses 6,283 mils in a circle, leading to a slight but computable difference. I haven't been able to find information on whether the mechanical adjustments are also different between the two. Will Army mill dot optics also use turrets converted to correspond with the reticle, or do they still use regular USMC adjustment values? If there's a difference in click value, then a conversion factor would need to be applied to any data obtained from a ballistic calculator that assumes standard USMC mills. Thanks for any insight, Dustin. Um, well, Dusty, I don't know what uh, sources you were looking at out there. I think there was some confusion in the sources that you were looking at because uh, it's not really a difference of Army mills or USMC mills. Uh, it's a difference between what you are applying the mills to, the situation that you are using them in. Now, first, let's talk about what a mill radian is. A uh, mill radian is just simply a angular unit of measure. It's like a degree, but in smaller increments. Uh, degrees, we all know there's 360 degrees in a circle, uh, but there are some situations where you need to break that circle down into a finer increment uh, to be more precise with your measurement. A great example of that would be with artillery. Uh, now, artillery or land navigation, because they kind of go hand in hand, you're still utilizing maps and you're shooting azimuths on maps and trying to figure out uh, which direction to call the guns in on, uh, that system utilizes 6,400 mils in a circle. Uh, now, it doesn't matter if it's uh, Marine Corps or if it's Army or if it's Naval gunfire or if it's Air Force jets, etc. Uh, for navigation, we use 6,400 mils in a circle. Uh, the reason for that is 6400 mils is very easy to break down in your mind. It's very easy for humans to break down quickly without a calculator. I know that if I want a bearing that corresponds to due south or 180 degrees, then I just break 6400 in half and I get 3200. If I know I want a mil conversion for 90 degrees, I just break that 1600 in half, or I'm sorry, the 3200 in half, and I get 1600. So 1600 would correspond to 90 degrees. Uh, and it's very quick and easy. Uh, now you guys can put your pencils and put your paper away. This isn't really gonna be math intensive. And if you start to get lost a little bit, stick with me till the end and I'm gonna tie it all back together for you. Uh, so. For that, we use 6,400 mils for land navigation or uh, for artillery. Now, uh, this little thing in front of me that is probably pretty hard for you guys to see uh, is a plastic uh, protractor for land navigation. Uh, guys that are in the military have done a land navigation or a call for fire uh, or even any forward observing will probably recognize these. Uh, is just simply a clear piece of plastic that has markings printed on it corresponding to various map scales. And it also has a degree and a mil radian marking on the outside of it. Uh, obviously zero to 360 degrees, but I also have zero to 6,400 mils. Uh, and this one actually comes from headquarters of the army. Um, but they're also the exact same thing that we used in the Marine Corps. Now, let's switch over to rifle scopes. Uh, now, rifle scopes are not based on 6,400 mils in a circle. Uh, rifle scopes are actually based on a true mill, and a true mill is based on 6,283.185 mil radians in a circle. Now, I've read that to you once. That's it, you can purge that from your brain because you will never need that factor again. Uh, that's simply to show the difference between the two scales. Um, as I mentioned, the 6,400 mils in a circle 
is necessary to be an approximation so that humans can utilize that a whole lot easier. Um, I won't go into the history of why the two scales diverged. Um, we'll leave a Wikipedia entry down in the description below that you guys can check out. Uh, if you're really interested in that, uh, if you really want me to, at some point, maybe I'll go into a video on it, uh, but it's starting to get a little bit out of my lane. I will tell you that rifle scopes utilize true mills, and the reason for that is a true mill actually equates to one one thousandth of a radius. And again, this is all information that you can kind of purge from your brain because the practical application of it is very easy to remember. Uh, since we are dealing with one one thousandth of an increment, um, then it's really, really simple to remember. If I take this rifle scope and I fire a bullet downrange and I make an adjustment of, say, one full mil to the left, then if my target was at a thousand yards, when I make that adjustment one full mil to the left, that will move the impact of my bullet one yard to the left, a one one thousandth, one mil to the left on a hundred yard target, uh, that's going to move my bullet. 3.6 inches on a 100 yard target. If it was a 100 meter target, uh, then it will move my bullet 10 centimeters to the left. Uh, so the reason this works very easily for us is because it doesn't matter if your brain works in imperial units or if your brain works in metric units, it's still 1 1,000th. A mil is an angular unit of measure, it is not imperial, it is not metric. Uh, if you really wanted uh, to try to classify it or box it into one system, it would fit more nicely in uh, to the metric system because it works on a one one thousandth. Um, but it works very, very well for us. Now, as far as reticles and turrets, turrets being the same, if you have mill radian turrets, the mill radian turret should be based on the true mill as should your reticle. Now, where the real confusion comes in versus Army and Marine Corps uh, mills is the old school mill dot reticles. Now I can't speak really for the army because I didn't use old army gear, but old Marine Corps gear while I was active duty, our scopes, our Unertal 10X scopes, had two different styles of reticles in them. They were all mill dot reticles, uh, but you had the chance of either getting one with circular mill dots or football shaped mill dots. Uh, now, to my knowledge, the Marine Corps is pretty much the only place that you would find these football-shaped mill dots, so those kind of became called USMC mill dots. Um, the Army mill dots are standard round mill dots like you would find in the mill dot reticle in this Bushnell 3200 that I have here. Um, so on a round mill dot, the mill dot is 0.2 mils thick. On a USMC mill dot, where it is football shaped and it's kind of stretched out along the stadia line that goes through it, uh, from end to end on the stadia line, it's 0.25 mils, so it's a quarter of a mil. Uh, so that makes uh, it makes it a little bit different if you're switching between reticles. You had to be careful uh, when you got your reticle to throw that scope against a white background. Really take a look at that reticle and see if you had football mills or round mills. If you had the football dots, then you had to remember 0.25 was the thickness of your mill dot. Uh, if you had round, then you had to remember 0.2 uh, was the thickness of your mill dot. And that's where that separation came in. We didn't really worry about the uh, turrets on those uh, because at that time, MOA turrets were the standard. Uh, the Marine Corps turrets were a actual ballistic turret where you dialed your distance into the turret and then it had a lever on the turret below it that was a fine tune uh, that corresponded to an MOA value. Uh, the Army scopes, uh, the Army fixed 10 power scopes, those were set up uh, in MOA as well. Uh, so they had MOA adjustments to uh, deal with. It wasn't until much later that the military started adopting matching turrets and reticle. And of course, there was a, a whole lot of... Uh, angst in that whole deal. Uh, and a lot of shooters still get into this, uh, oh, I don't want to switch over to mills because I don't want to have to relearn anything. I don't want to have to do a conversion. Uh, there is no conversion factor. It is just simply learning a slightly different way of thinking. And then once you get that slightly different way of thinking down, uh, it's dead on. And again, because we are not changing from an imperial to a metric system or a metric to an imperial system, um, it's fairly easy 
uh, to make the leap over to mills. On the scope that I have here, uh, it has uh, mill turrets and a mill reticle in it, and it is very, very easy when I fire a shot downrange, if I measure that that shot deviated from my target by half a mil through the reticle, uh, then I come back the other way, half a mil on the turret, fire, and I should be dead on. Uh, it makes things very, very simple instead of having to go, okay, I'm using MOA, so I need to factor in how far the target was and try to divide and do all kinds of math. Um, it's not that big of a deal. Now, switching over real quick, I'll touch on MOA turrets and MOA reticles. Um, it's really not a big deal as long as your turrets and your reticle match and you know what that is that it's true MOA, not shooter's MOA or inch per hundred yards, uh, then you know what to tell your ballistic computer to give you, uh, how to convert that firing solution in the ballistic computer, and you're good to go. But as far as mills are concerned and mill dots, uh, if your scope comes with mill turrets and mill reticle, they should be true mill. Uh, you shouldn't have to worry about any conversions. You just tell the ballistic computer to output in mills and you are good to go. So I hope that didn't greatly confuse anybody. Um, I hope uh, it was as clear a description as possible. But if you have any comments, please go ahead and send us your questions. I'd love to hear them. Uh, you can either leave them in the comments if you're watching this on YouTube, or you guys can uh, send it to us at uh, Facebook or Twitter uh, if you're listening to this on our podcast. And this should be the first ever podcast episode, so if you're listening to us on podcast, uh, thank you very much. And that about wraps it up for Mail Call Mondays. If you have any questions for Mail Call Mondays, please leave them in the comment section below or send them to us on Facebook or Twitter. Uh, if you guys are listening to us on the podcast, we will leave an email in the description of the podcast below so you can check that out and email us questions for Mail Call Mondays. And until next time, get out and shoot!